Uh, joining us now to weigh in on all of this is 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. He's also an entrepreneur, the author of What Woke Inc. Good afternoon. Great to have you in, Vivek. It's good to be on. How are you? We're doing well. pretty good. Uh, obviously, we're watching a lot of news happening in D.C. You tweeted out yourself that the deal for Hunter Biden was a joke, cannot be a two-tier justice system. That said, though, as we report on that deal collapsing, we know it's also likely an indictment for Trump. The third one is coming. So as these legal cases mount for him, Vivek, what opportunities does that present for you as a candidate? Well, I don't look at my opportunities as a candidate. To be honest, I'm speaking on the side of principle here. I'm polling at third nationally across the Republican primary polls right now. It would be easier for me if Trump was eliminated from competition. That's not the result I want to see. I want to win this race by convincing the voters that I'm the right person to lead our America First agenda forward. And I think it sets a dangerous precedent in this country when we have a party in power that uses police force to protect its own family members while also using that police force to arrest and indict its political opponents. I was the first and most outspoken advocate for this view, and I stand by it today. It is wrong, and we have to stand for one standard of law in this country. That's what I'll restore if I'm elected. Well, let's talk about, and we've heard the word weaponization of the federal government a lot um, in recent weeks and certainly in recent months. Um, and on that note, you're unveiling, you've unveiled this plan to shut down the quote unquote deep state, as it's called, which includes shuttering the FBI, the NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, also the Department of Education. That would result in potentially tens of thousands of people being out of work and their families being impacted by that. How would you help those people uh, who are mostly by and large probably hard workers and don't necessarily represent the deep state. I'd say a couple things about that. One is the job of the U.S. federal government is not to provide employment opportunity. The job of the private sector, that's what they do. So there are more jobs than there are people in the United States of America today. I think it'll be good for those bureaucrats and good for our economy to send them actually to find honest work in the private sector. I've also been very specific about my plans, John, to be really specific about this. I said I would shut down the FBI. Yes, 20,000 people in back office functions that are the source of politicization. They're going to have to go back into the private sector. But the 15,000 agents who are doing good work on the front lines, just executing their commands, their duties, they would move to the U.S. Marshals or to the DEA or to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network at the U.S. Treasury. That's one of the reasons I think we're doing so well in the recent national polling is that I'm leading the way in offering unprecedented detail on exactly how we would shut down that administrative state, how we will shut down the deep state, not just talking about it, but laying out exactly how we will get that done. Mm. That'll take an outsider, but it also takes somebody who understands the laws and constitution of the country. Yeah, let's get your take on the first debate. It is set uh, happening in just a few weeks. Trump is not expected to be there on the stage. Are you disappointed? And uh, are there folks you don't think should actually be on the stage as well? I think that that's a fair decision from Trump in the early debates. Some have used the analogy of getting a buy in the playoffs if you're the top seed. So as long as he's in the debates at some point, I'm fine with that decision. I'm focused on not just running against anybody. I'm running for this nation. That's part of what's propelling us already on our way to the top. And I think that too long as a Republican Party, we've been running from something. This is our moment to start running to something to our vision of what it means to be an American, to stand up for America first principles, to say that we're not going to spend $200 billion defending somebody else's border from an invasion halfway around the world when we have to stop an invasion on our own southern border using the same military to do it. Hey, Vivek, so I believe in standing by principle, and that's what we're going forward on. We learned you were a rapper. That was one thing that came out. We're not going to ask you to <laughs> rap. Um, anything else in your background you want to share with us? Because it's all going to come out no matter what. Uh, or anything that's sort of a, a thing that you think may come out you want to tell us about now? And I, and I had a question on that <laughs> note, not on the rapping, yeah. but on something else. But go ahead. Yeah. That was an interesting sidebar, yeah, though. I, I have, I've, I've had diverse interests. I was an academic guy. I was a molecular biologist by background. I had a short-lived career in stand-up comedy. My biggest career, of course, was in business. I built multi-billion dollar businesses 
in biotech and also in asset management to compete well, against black so so your, mic clips may come out i was going to say you're also <laughs> the youngest candidate you're I, 37 years yeah. old i believe a millennial running for for president does that you know that's obviously going to be brought up it's been brought up but what's also been brought up is your ability to use the media and social media specifically to put your work message out there but do you think the age factor you think that's going to be an issue for you uh, detrimental or do you think it's uh it's a positive thing I think it's net positive. I've got fresh legs. Yes, I've accomplished a lot in my 37 years as a citizen of this country, but I've got fresh legs and a youthful spirit to reach the next generation of Americans. That's a big part of what pulled me into this is young people are no longer proud to be citizens of this country. I think I'm best positioned to revive that national pride. 40% of our 70,000 donors to this campaign are first time ever donors to the GOP, and Mm. many of them are young. Think about that for a second. That's the difference between a 50.1 electoral margin and a landslide election in the general. I think I'm the only candidate in this race that can actually deliver a Reagan style, 1980 style landslide, a moral mandate. And I think that's what we're going to need. A 50.1 election should not be an option. We need a landslide. And I think with young people in this country, we can deliver it. Well, you're definitely uh, reaching a lot of people and we appreciate your time. We hope you come back on. Uh, and tell us more and how the campaign and everything's going. Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you very much. I appreciate much. it. Good to talk to you. Thanks, Vivek. Good to see you. Thank, thank you. you. I bet.